While almost everyone in the country, including myself, have been focused on the seemingly endless number of objects that the Air Force is suddenly shooting out of the sky, well, there was a chemical fire of epic proportions over in Ohio. That's right, despite what seems to be a media blackout, the Ohio state government initiated a controlled chemical fire that was not only massive, but the after effects might be a lot more deadly than what the official narrative might lead you to believe. And in fact, along that line, a journalist over in Ohio was just arrested while reporting on the giant disaster. However, in order to explain what's happening here, let me back up and start at the very beginning. And I hope that if you appreciate content like this, you do take a quick moment to smash those like and subscribe buttons, which will force the YouTube algorithm to share this video out to ever more people. Now, to start with, last week, a freight train with over 100 cars derailed in a small town called East Palestine, Ohio. It's located in the eastern part of the state near the border with Pennsylvania. Now, fortunately, no one was killed in that accident. However, unfortunately, the accident launched 50 of the cars off the tracks, and among those derailed cars, 10 of them contained hazardous materials. Specifically, they contained pressurized vinyl chloride, hydrogen chloride, as well as ethyl hexyl acrylate, which are extremely toxic and carcinogenic chemicals, meaning they cause cancer. Now, this scenario was already bad enough, but it actually got worse. That's because due to the potential for a giant uncontrolled explosion, the governor of Ohio, Mr. Mike DeWine, he took the suggestion of the state's emergency management agency and he authorized a controlled burning of the toxic materials. Here was his statement explaining his rationale. Um, there's a concern, the railroad has a, a, a serious concern which they can express to you uh, about an explosion uh, with one or more uh, of these cars. They describe an explosion as potentially catastrophic. It could potentially explode, causing deadly disbursement of shrapnel and toxic fumes. So following new modeling information conducted this morning by the Ohio National Guard, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro are ordering an immediate evacuation in a one mile by two mile area surrounding East Palestine, which includes both Ohio and Pennsylvania. To alleviate the risk of this shrapnel, Norfolk Southern Railroad is planning a controlled release of the vinyl chloride at approximately 3.30 p.m. The controlled release of the toxic chemicals also has the potential to be deadly if inhaled. Those in the red area, those in the red area are facing grave danger of death if they are still in that area. And therefore, to avoid the scenario of a giant uncontrolled explosion with shrapnel flying in all directions, the state of Ohio set the train cars on fire themselves. But while that decision might have averted a giant explosion with shrapnel flying everywhere, it did not avoid releasing toxic gases into the air. The videos of this fire are something like out of a movie, with massive plumes of black smoke shooting up into the sky for several days on end. And the smoke, well, it contained vinyl chloride, phosgene, hydrogen chloride, among several other highly toxic gases. And it's worth noting that phosgene in particular is an extremely toxic gas. So toxic, in fact, that it was used during the First World War as a chemical weapon to kill soldiers who were hiding in their foxholes. Now, when this giant fire was initially set off, the governor, as we saw in that video, he sent out an evacuation order to anyone living within a mile radius of the, bl of the blast zone, telling them to get away from their homes due to the risk of these dangerous chemicals posed to their and their families' health. However, within just a few days, the evacuation order was lifted, and the local officials said that it was safe for people to return, which was a decision that many questioned, including Mr. Sil Cogiano, a hazardous materials specialist. Here's what he said regarding this decision to a local news outlet. Quote, We basically nuked the town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. I was surprised when they quickly told the people they can go back home, but then said if they feel like they want their homes tested, they can have them tested. I would have far rather they did all the testing. But the state and local officials went even further than just telling people that they can return. That's because the East Palestine fire chief held a press conference during which he said that the air and water samples that they've collected indicate that the air and water quality in the local area are perfectly safe for the residents. But this is where the official narrative begins to deviate from what we're seeing on the ground. With the first clue showing that something might be off being the fact that during the press conference, a reporter who was there was arrested. As you can see from the footage up on your screen, 
a journalist for News Nation was there covering the press conference when he was suddenly thrown to the ground by the police, arrested, and taken to jail for alleged trespassing and disorderly conduct. In reality, though, if you watch the actual footage, it looked like he was just there at the press conference doing some normal reporting. In fact, after the man was thrown into jail, the governor, Mike DeWine, he came out and he issued a statement essentially washing his hands of the whole affair, saying that it wasn't him who authorized the arrest. Quote, it has always been my practice that if I'm doing a press conference, someone wants to report out there and they want to be talking back to the people back on the channel, whatever, they have every right to do that. If someone was stopped from doing that or told they could not do that, that was wrong. It was nothing that I authorized. And so with that as the backdrop, let's examine the validity of what was said during the press conference. How safe is the area around East Palestine really? Well, to start with, after the controlled fire was over, local authorities began to receive multiple reports from the residents living outside of the one-mile radius zone saying that the fallout from the disaster was far from over. For instance, a local farmer named Taylor Holzer, who raises foxes on his farm, he said that after the chemical fire, many of his foxes suddenly died. Here was Taylor describing what happened to just one of his foxes. Quote, Out of nowhere, one of my foxes just started coughing really hard, just shut down. This is not how a fox should act. He is very weak, limp. His eyes are very watery and weepy. Smoke and chemicals from the train, that's the only thing that can cause it because it doesn't just happen out of nowhere. The chemicals that we're being told are safe in the air, that's definitely not safe for the animals or people. Which besides being extremely alarming also raises questions about not only the fatal effects of the air quality in the surrounding area, but also the very idea that the chemical fire only affected a one mile radius from the train tracks. And Taylor was far from the only one seeing this happen. Another local farmer who raises chickens saw her flock suddenly dying out. Here's what she told an ABC affiliate in the local area. Quote, My video camera footage shows my chickens were perfectly fine before they started this burn. And as soon as they started the burn, my chickens slowed down and they died. If it can do this to chickens in one night, imagine what it's going to do to us in 20 years. Then another local resident said that once the evacuation order was lifted and her and her family returned home, they began getting sick. Here's how she responded to the local officials who said that everything was fine and dandy. Quote, the headaches and nausea her family experienced at their house last weekend and the pungent odor that reminds her of a mixture of nail polish remover and burning tires told her otherwise. Then you had another local resident who owns a dog kennel 10 full miles from the fire. Here's what she described her neighborhood to be like. And again, this is 10 full miles from the blast zone. Quote, one of those residents was Kathleen Schwarzwelder the operator of a local dog kennel in nearby Darlington, Pennsylvania. The catastrophe caused her to leave her home, despite the fact that it lies more than 10 miles away from the site of the controlled burn. After fleeing to Boardman, Ohio, 15 miles from the derailment, Schwarzwelder stated she received multiple reports of dead chickens, fish, and other animals from friends and acquaintances. One affected resident told Schwarzwelder that they led their two-year-old dog out to use the bathroom only for it to never return. When they embarked upon a search for their missing pet, they found it dead in their yard. But the story actually gets a lot deeper than that, which we'll get to after I introduce the sponsor of today's episode, which is an awesome company that actually sold me this beautiful coin. This right here is an American Walking Liberty one ounce gold coin. And typically I order at least one of these from our sponsor, American Hartford Gold, every single month. The reason I do so is because, I mean, as you likely know, the inflation rate in this country is the highest that has been in, what, the last 40 years now? Everything like the price of food, the price of housing, the price of gas is absolutely going through the roof. And in fact, market experts like the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, he's not only predicting a recession, but he's even using words like unprecedented economic hurricane. And so listen, I absolutely do not give you any financial advice, but I would recommend that you do what I do, which is pick up the phone and call American Hartford Gold. Their super friendly staff can help you diversify your portfolio by either getting physical gold and physical silver delivered directly to your doorstep like I do, or deposited directly into your IRA and your 401k accounts they make the entire process super simple. And actually, besides me, they have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau with quite literally thousands of satisfied clients around the country. And best of all, to our viewers, to the viewers of Facts Matter, they are currently throwing in $2,500 worth of free silver on your first qualifying order. So giving them a call is an absolute no-brainer. So pick up the phone and call 866-242-2352. That's 866-242-2352. Or text ROMAN to 65532. Their link will also be down in the description box below. And then let's head on back to the studio. And this type of devastation does not appear to be limited to only the animals living on land. For instance, according to a local official 
who manages river preservation in the area, they are getting reports of fish dying in the waterways. Here's what he told local media, quote, Leslie Run comes out of East Palestine, and that goes into Bull Creek, which then goes into North Fork. And we know for sure that there has been some fish kill in Leslie Run and Bull Creek and some portions of the North Fork, with fish kill meaning dead fish. Now, of course, it goes without saying that very likely nobody wanted this fire. And the officials that decided to start the fire, such as, for instance, the governor, he really did likely see it as the best option that they had in order to avert a giant explosion. That's at least the official story. However, now that it's over, it's incredibly important for the people living in that local area to get accurate, honest assessments about the possible long-term dangers to their and their family's health. And these reports from the local farmers and the local residents, well, they seem to be painting a rather significantly different picture from the official narrative, because this is what they're saying, while the official narrative is saying that the situation is okay and it's under control. But let me read to you a small excerpt that came out of the Washington Post where they interviewed someone living in the area, and you tell me if this sounds like everything is under control. Quote, Some nights, resident Eric Whitney says the air smells like an over-chlorinated swimming pool, and his eyes burn. He returned to his house the day authorities lifted the evacuation order. He can't move his family of five out of their home, so he says he has no choice but to stay put and follow authorities' instructions. Eric is then quoted as saying in the article, quote, For a small town, we have to trust them, because what else do we have to do? We have to trust that they are not lying to us. And for his sake, as well as for the sake of his family, I hope that's true. And I also hope that 5, 10, 15 years from now, we don't see a cluster of cancers popping up in the area. Because to be honest, I mean, that would just be devastating. People are listening to their local authorities who say that the area is safe, and so they're returning to their homes. However, the whole place smells of chemicals, and the people are staying put, because again, the local authorities say that it's okay. And I, for one, just hope that they're right. Although, frankly, if I was living in that area and I had the opportunity to, I would leave as soon as I possibly could, even though very likely right now selling your home in, in East Palestine might be a difficult venture. If you'd like to go deeper into the story, I'll throw all my research notes down into the description box below, including actually something that I didn't really get to touch on in the episode itself, which is the fact that the EPA still has not disclosed the names of all the chemicals that were on the train cars. And because of that, it's still not clear which gases were released into the air. In fact, just today, which is already over a full week from the fire, they are still discovering more chemicals that were present in the train cars. And so if you'd like to go deeper into that part of the story, I'll throw the links to some articles regarding the EPA's odd decision. It'll also be down there in the description box below. And then lastly, I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you trust the local government officials in regards to the after effects of this fire? Leave your comments in the comments section below, and I'll be reading them later tonight as well as well into the week. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed, and most importantly, stay free.